as we know guys okay this is the you know uh, this will be the cyber security foundation course we are taking from okay on the behalf of infosec train and okay uh, domain one is completed networking basics okay and i'll be taking a domain two which is nothing but a defensive security basics okay so let us start with you know uh, this is about me okay i already discussed this uh, uh, in the first day so no need to again explain about me okay so let us quickly go into the agenda of uh, today's session or you can say that the day eight of the course which is starting with the cryptography and introduction okay then we'll be talking about basic terminologies in cryptography then uh, we'll be talking about encryption and its types encodings uh, what is digital signature and how we can use it what are the different uh, use cases of it okay we also talk about digital certificates too okay then we'll talk about the pki infrastructure uh, and its introduction then we're talking about the certification authorities and uh, what are the different types of certifications okay and finally we'll be talking about certificate chaining got it so let us go ahead with the first introduction to cryptography let me introduce this uh, cryptography okay so as we know that cryptography is uh, you know it is we can simply say that it is the science of secure communication in the presence of adversaries okay uh, like it involves techniques and methods for encrypting information okay to ensure that it remains confidential authenticate and integral during transmission or storage yeah and guys the basic or we can say that the primary goal of cryptography is to make it difficult for unauthorized individual to access sensitive information okay so in simple words we can simply say that uh, like we are uh, you know storing our data in you know uh, in you know in the you can say that the uh, different kinds of you know uh, keys we can say or we can say that the in different kinds of uh, you know encryption okay in the form of encryption we can simply store the data okay so uh, it will be quite difficult to you know hack that data or uh, to see that data yeah so uh, you know cryptography relies on you know some mathematical algorithms and protocols to secure data it involves two main processes as we know encryption and decryption like few guys already mentioned as well okay so as we know encryption is the process of transforming plain text that is uh, simple we can say that our data or uh, like we can say that unencrypted data so like our uh, simple photo or uh, simple uh, you know email we can simply say that that is nothing but you know plain text into cipher text that is nothing but encrypted data okay using some mathematical algorithm and secret key so with the help of that we can able to access that you know encrypted data by using secret key okay and decryption is the reverse process of converting cipher text back into plain text using the same key okay so like uh, like if you guys uh, 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 if you guys have a dmat account so you can uh, uh, you know usually get an email and uh, from the you know uh, the nsc bsc as well as uh, you know uh, different you know uh, institutes or even from you know uh, your brokers like dmat account brokers you can simply say and uh, those are sending you the file which are encrypted one okay like that file has uh, you know has some password so you will have to enter the password then only you will be able to access that particular file okay so that is nothing but the you know encryption and decryption you can simply say that it's an application of cryptography okay uh, as we know that uh, that is the one 
you know application okay we are uh, in real time we are using it okay so cryptography has various application in so many different fields like uh, including finance most uh, like very important national security e-commerce sector and communicate uh, you know communication system yeah some of the commonly used cryptographic techniques include symmetric key encryption public key encryption digital signature and hash functions okay we'll be talking about this okay in upcoming you know uh, in the upcoming class slides okay so these techniques provide a secure and reliable means of exchanging information over an in insecure network okay ensuring that only authorized parties have access to the data okay so that's why uh, you know cryptography becomes uh, so much uh, you know plays a very uh, important role in you know in our life as well as as we are uh, talking about you know our domain which is uh, domain 2 which is nothing but defensive security basics so here also cryptography plays a vital role in defensive security too by providing a means to protect sensitive information from unauthorized access as well as modification or theft it is a fundamental building block in the design of secure systems and can be used to implement various defensive security measures okay such as confidentiality integrity authentication and non repetition okay if we're talking about like in terms of confidentiality uh, we can say that cryptography can be used to encrypt sensitive data such as personal information our financial information or uh, the trade secrets of uh, you know the countries as well like making it unreadable to unauthorized individuals who might intercept it okay uh, in terms of integrity like we know that uh, you know uh, the ci right so we'll be talking about uh, in terms of ci right like confidentiality integrity you know uh, availability authenticity uh, like authenticity authentication like that okay so in terms of integrity you know the cryptography can be used to ensure the integrity of data by implementing checksums or uh, digital signature these techniques allow the receivers to verify that the data has not been altered during transmission okay if we talking about authentication so you know cryptography can be used to authenticate users even devices or entities ensuring that they are who they claim to be okay one common technique for user authentication is password based encryption okay so what about non repudiation okay so cryptography can be used to provide non repudiation which means that a user cannot deny having you know uh, perform a particular action or transaction like digital signatures are commonly used for non repudiation so the person cannot deny uh, like he took any action or the transaction like sometimes uh, you know uh, uh, some people okay who took some actions uh, regarding you know uh, or who you know are in the you know scam or frauds okay after uh, after uh, like police catch them or cops catch them so they deny this like i haven't did that i uh, like i was there i was there like that okay so with the help of this cryptography okay it is very easy to you know uh, like that that person can deny that thing okay by using you know digital signatures we can simply say okay so overall cryptography is a crucial uh, you know defensive security tool that can be used to protect against various attacks including you know device dropping data tampering and identity theft it can be implemented in various ways from simple encryption techniques to many complex cryptographic protocols depending on the level of security required for a particular system or application okay so you know that is about a bit uh, you know about a cryptography 
and as we know that uh, guys cryptography is not a small thing it's a very big thing that's why we need to understand the you know basic terminologies in cryptography so let's talk about that what are the different basic terminologies in cryptography like uh, as we know that uh, like a lot of guide, uh, guys know about the you know many uh, terminologies of you know cryptography so let's explain one by one terminology so everyone can understand what are the different basic terminologies are there in cryptography okay and we'll talk about the examples of those as well okay so everyone can understand and uh, let's understand first is nothing but plain text so guys what is plain text as uh, we like we all already like i mentioned in the you know definition of cryptography or explanation of cryptography what is plain text already okay in the session so what is plain text yep so uh, if you're talking about plain text so we can simply say that it refers to the original unencrypted message or our data okay like we can we can simply say that okay like from the plain text for some guys uh, just confused about the plain text because sometimes it might be a you know image as well okay so it's not just the you know text it just it will be the uh, you know image or any data or you know the message as well okay okay so like for example example of plain text so we can simply say that any message you you know you send to your friend that is nothing but the plain text yes it could be program as well it could be any code as well cool okay so if you're talking about you know example so we can simply say that any message like hello how are you okay like uh, anything okay like you or sometimes answers as well you shared with your friends okay that is nothing but the plain text you can simply say okay so now okay what is another terminology okay when it comes to the cipher text so we simply uh, like cipher text refers to the encrypted message or data that is produced after applying cryptographic algorithm okay so like uh, we'll be talking about the different cryptographic algorithms okay uh, later in this session okay so these are just the terminologies so understand this so see if you have the data let's say hello how are you okay this is just the message okay you are sending to your friend okay and instead of you know sharing this message okay in the plain text okay you shared the message in cipher text now cipher text okay is nothing but the you know uh, you applied some mathematical algorithm on the plain text okay hello how are you and now okay the text okay the cipher text is in the format of like one two three four a e b like that okay like a coding language you can say okay so you will not be able to read that kind of uh language or words okay so that is nothing but cipher text okay and then with like along with that okay cipher text okay you shared the you know keys as well or you can say that the secret key or simply password okay so like you shared the file along with password so your friend got that file with password so okay your friend can able to access that file as well okay because that file is a crypt okay uh, you know encrypted okay and uh, you know your friend just after entering the password okay that 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 file is decrypted okay that is nothing but your cipher text okay simply encrypted message or data okay like many examples okay uh like uh, like if you want the examples of the uh, you know cipher text so it's like a uh, you know uh, the password uh, suggested by the google like sometimes if you are uh, logging into some 
website so at that time after entering the email google will suggest you the password okay and that password you know uh, you know encrypted password you can say like in that password you will see that the some uh, alphabets you know uh, some low uppercase letters lower case letters some uh, symbols like exclamation marks equal to symbols like that okay uh, like question mark okay and then numbers as well so combination of all these is nothing but the cipher text okay great so let's move ahead with the next which is nothing but the cryptographic algorithm okay so as we know that okay we are converting plain text into the cipher text by using cryptographic algorithm by applying cryptographic algorithm on the plain text we will get the cipher text okay like there are some website as well those who can convert your plain text into the cipher text as well as uh, vice versa okay you can simply search on the internet like how to encrypt your data okay you will get the you know those website those will be able to convert your plain text into the cipher text as well as the vice versa okay so what are the different algorithms that you have okay as a cryptographic algorithm okay so as we know that okay cryptographic algorithm is a set of mathematical rules okay and procedures to uh, use to encrypt and decrypt data okay like uh, yeah yeah the advanced encryption standard okay like we have the des the data encryption standard okay then we have the the rsa algorithm then uh, like we also have the the caesar cipher okay like that okay you will find that the if you search for the uh, this algorithms you will get so many algorithms yeah so let us talk about next terminology which is nothing but encryption okay like all guys know about the encryption encryption is the process of converting plain text into cipher text using a cryptographic algorithms okay like uh, if you wanted to you know uh, the encrypt the message let's say uh, hello okay so with the help of you know caesar cipher algorithm so you know we take key of 3 so you know you will get the you know encrypted data like this k uh, in the you know alphabets with k h double o r like who okay so this is just the example okay i took down and you can you can use your message okay and you can generate your encrypted data as well okay so you can be able to read that data let us move and talk about the decryption okay so all guys know about the decryption De decryption is the process of converting cipher text back into the plain text using a decryption algorithm and a key okay so again like uh, as i mention one example like uh, hello word okay i encrypted by using a caesar cipher algorithm okay and that encrypted data now is nothing but khur okay k h o o r okay now i just wanted to decrypt that data okay with a key of 3 okay so again i'll be getting a hello word okay in terms of output or you can say that the unencrypted data okay our plain text we can say okay that is nothing but the decryption okay again decryption is a process of converting cipher text back into the plain text okay so let us talk about key what is key okay so as we know that okay for uh, in at the time of encryption okay will be create will be uh, yes absolutely we can uh, say the alternate uh, alternative or the or the name about the key is nothing but password okay so we can say that it is a parameter used in the encryption and decryption 
processes which determines the output of the cryptographic algorithm yeah like if you use the different algorithms you will get the uh, different encrypted data okay because the pattern of the encryption and the decryption is different in each and every algorithm yeah okay so key is nothing but the password okay for encryption okay for encrypting your data as well as okay decrypting your data now let us talk about another terminology which is nothing but hash function okay like we'll be talking about more about this in terms of you know offensive security basics okay hash function okay uh, and you will see that how uh, you know some more of the particle related to attacks how you can do the attack okay in the offensive security basics okay this is a defensive security basic so we'll be talking about uh, these terms okay okay so let me uh, you know explain this term hash function okay see guys and now we are going into the you know uh, all the basics and uh, some kind of you know exciting work you can say and uh, like like from monday i guess we'll be starting the you know practical how to uh, not like overall practical just the you know basic one so you will understand okay how you can use uh, you know uh, the different kinds of operating systems okay which are uh, like the hackers are using okay like the kali okay metasploitable tool like that okay okay so uh, what about hash function so a hash function is a mathematical algorithm that takes an input or simply you can say that the message or your data and produces a fixed size output you can simply say that the hash or the digest which represents the original data in a unique way that is nothing but hash function okay so what are the different algorithms for this so uh, like we have the sha the secure hash algorithm then we have the message uh, message digest algorithm like the md algorithm okay so like these two algorithms uh, we have okay like we also have the other algorithms as well but these are the two most common one okay secure hash algorithm so with the help of this you you will be able to you know implement hash function on your data so if we're talking about the key length so key length is uh, is the number of bits used in a cryptography key which determines the level of security provided by the encryption okay so as we know guys key length uh, like the number of letters in the in your password yes number of letters in your password that is nothing but the key length in simple words okay so here you can see that okay like uh, like a example uh, if you take the example like a 56 bit in uh, a1 algorithm which is nothing but des okay like in another algorithm uh, we have the 128 bits okay keys in es algorithm likewise we have the 2004 uh, 2048 bit keys in rsa like these are the algorithms and uh, you will find that the number of bits okay so the length of this is nothing but the key length okay what about public key guys okay so we can uh, explain like this a public key is a component of a asymmetric key encryption that can be freely distributed to anyone who wishes to communicate with the owner of the private key okay uh, like sometimes uh, like in ai in machine learning few people who uh, shared the data in terms of you know uh, you know encrypt encryption 
and uh, with the public key okay like that okay what about private key guys a private key is a component of asymmetric key encryption that is kept secret by the owner and used to decrypt messages encrypted with the corresponding public keys okay that is nothing but your private key okay what about key exchange so private key is just the you know uh, key okay which is kept secret by the owner and used to decrypt messages as well as encrypted with the corresponding public key like uh, there is one file okay with the public key everyone can access to that file okay with the public key okay so people are using that public key to you know decrypt that data so again owner uses you know its private key okay to you know decrypt that messages okay as well as uh, encrypt that messages okay then we have a key exchange okay so key exchange is the process of securely sharing cryptographic keys between two parties okay let's say uh, right now like uh, like few companies are uh, you know uh, just acquiring other companies acquiring other companies so let's say if they have the data like which is uh, very much you know uh, you know the data of their company okay so you will find that the, there is a key okay so that need to share with uh, okay the new owner okay so that is nothing but the key exchange okay okay then we have the steganography okay so as we know that steganography is the practice of hiding secret messages or data within other non secret data such as your images or audio files okay that is nothing but the steganography okay so like for example hiding a secret message within the pixel of an image using the lsb lsb is nothing but least significant bit method okay like if we talking about uh, if we take any other example so like hiding a secret message within the you know silence of an audio file by manipulating the amplitude of the waveform okay like many movies you saw this okay steganography uh, like you know in uh, like sometimes in spy movies you will see that the like uh, people shared the data okay or people shared the you know one book or one file okay and that file uh, if if common man just open that file so that in that file you will see that the blank pages okay but yes definitely person a okay shared the file with the person b but if the person c took that file and see that file so person c finds nothing but person b able to find that the message inside the file okay by that is nothing but the steganography okay now let us talk about the term cipher okay uh, like uh, i guess uh, like those who saw the you know fast and furious so that is a you know a very you know uh, villain character of the fast uh, you know i guess seven from seven eight okay you will see that the there is a character cipher so you know again okay here in the you know cryptography you will see that the cipher so cipher is a method of encrypting data usually involving a specific algorithm and key okay so like we have the examples for this are nothing but the you know our algorithms the caesar cipher the rsa algorithm okay like that then what about crypt analysis okay what about crypt analysis 
So see guys, crypt analysis is the study of analyzing and breaking cryptographic algorithms and systems. Okay, that is nothing but the crypt analysis. Okay, so we can simply say that if we take an example, so analyzing the frequency distribution of letters in a cipher text to determine the type of cipher used. Okay. Then we have another, you know, type which is nothing but the, you know, one way function. Okay. So as we know that, okay, in the one way function, a one way function is a mathematical function that is easy to compute in one direction, but difficult to compute in the opposite direction. Okay, so we can simply say that a one way function is again a mathematical function that is easy to complete in one direction, but difficult to compute in opposite direction. Okay, like example, the hash function in cryptography, right? Okay, let's talk about the key management. Okay, so what is key management? Like it is the process of generating as well as storing, distributing, and revoking cryptographic keys used in a system. Okay. Like uh, there is one root user and all are nothing but the users only. Okay. So root user is nothing but the owner of the, let's say your data and he shared uh, the file with you or data with you with the users. So he has the authority to you know, uh, you know, distribute or even generate the key, or you know, revoke a cryptographic key from any user. Okay, that is nothing but the key management. Okay, now let us talk about symmetric key cryptography. Like in the name itself, there is a word symmetrics, so we can say that symmetric key cryptography. Uh, you know, is a type of encryption that uses the same key for both encryption as well as decryption okay okay so what about a symmetric key cryptography like in the symmetric key cryptography there is only one key okay that key is for encryption for decryption as well yes in a symmetric there is two different keys for you know encryption for decryption yeah okay now what about block cipher yeah okay let me repeating both okay first one is symmetric key cryptography let's say there is a file okay okay if that file you know has a one key so we can say that okay so you can be able to encrypt the file by using that one key as well as you are decrypting that file by using the same key okay you have only one key so that is nothing but symmetric key cryptography if there are two different keys okay for encryption as well as there is another key for decryption you can't use uh, you know the other key for uh, like second key for first okay or for the first key for second like you can't use the encryption uh, key for the decryption and you and you can't use the decryption key for encryption that is nothing but unsymmetric you can asymmetric key cryptography got it okay now let us talk about block cipher yes so in simple terms we can say that okay it's a you know it's a type of symmetric key cryptography that encrypts your data in fixed size blocks. Okay, that is nothing but the block block cipher. Okay, like there are a few algorithms like DES, AES algorithms are there. Those who can, you know, create your data, uh, you know, in the form of fixed sizes blocks. Okay. Now, what about stream cipher? So here you can see that a stream cipher is again a type of symmetry key encrypt uh, cryptography that encrypts data in a continuous stream. Okay. 
that is nothing but the stream cipher yeah now what about the you know the attack you can see side channel attack because see uh, we saw the basic terminologies okay so now okay like why we are uh, understanding this okay because like in the past there are certain attacks what happened okay so to like to prevent those attack okay that's why okay we are understanding these terms okay from preventing from those attacks okay so if we talk about side channel attack so we can simple simply say that it is a type of attack that exploits weakness in a cryptographic system that are not related to the mathematical algorithms used okay like example using power analysis to observe the power consumption of a device during encryption to extract the encryption key okay like uh, if you take any other example like a you know using electromagnetic radiation to observe the activity of a deviation during encryption to extract the encryption key okay like they are using a you know different channels okay like a power okay and as well as a you know electromagnetic radiations okay to find out the encryption keys okay cool so these are the few basic terminologies you know about you know uh, you know in cryptography so now let us talk about you know the one which is nothing but the encryption okay to understand in more details it is a you know it is a type of attack that exploits weaknesses in cryptographic system okay that are not related to mathematical algorithms okay like on the like just by observing the power consumption of a device during encryption okay so we can able to extract the encryption key so we need the password okay to hack okay if we hack so we'll we'll definitely get the password so we are just finding out the weakness in cryptographic system okay like uh, when uh, like it comes to power consumption of a device okay during encryption okay so we can simply extract the encryption key from that that is nothing but the side channel attack okay so let's talk about the encryption in details okay because uh, like as in the you know agenda of this day okay of this particular day okay like there is a encryption because this cryptographic is totally uh, based on the encryption and decryption okay so we need to understand the encryption in you know in details okay what are the different types of the encryption okay like that uh, then we'll also talk about the you know the upcoming part which is nothing but the encoding and its types okay let us talk about the encryption that we all know okay like the encryption is the process of converting our data simply plain text into cipher text which is nothing but our encrypted data using a specific algorithm and key okay so the purpose of encryption is to protect the confidentiality of the data being transmitted or stored Okay, the encrypted data can only be read by someone who has the key to decrypt it. Okay, that is nothing but the purpose of the encryption. The encryption algorithm can be symmetric where the same key is used by both encryption and decryption, or when you know uh, encryption algorithm is asymmetric where different keys are used for encryption and 
decryption okay as we saw before in our session okay and there are the few algorithms okay like uh, about the symmetric you know encryption algorithms and what are those data encryption standard like des then we have the aes advanced encryption standard then we have blowfish okay and what about asymmetric encryption algorithms and those includes rsa algorithm okay and the elliptic curve cryptography we can say that the ecc algorithm okay okay so you know the strength of an encryption algorithm is measured by its key length which determines the number of possible keys that can be used okay longer keys provides better security but requires more processing power to encrypt and decrypt the data yeah as we know that what are the different applications of encryption okay like including secure communication over the internet like uh, in online transaction there is uh, encryption which is needed yes definitely outlook okay and secure storage of data okay like the you know uh, like in https protocols as well for secure browsing okay it uh, will be using the encryption okay like uh, in the secure email communication as well we we are using you know encryption and the you know the use of bit locker encryption to secure data on a computer's hard drive okay like overall encryption is an essential tool for protecting the confidentiality of our sensitive data and ensuring that it remains secure from unauthorized access or interpretation okay intercept got it so what are the different types of the encryption what are the different types of the encryption we can say so we can say that the you know the first one symmetric encryption okay as we know that the if the key is same for both encryption and decryption so it's nothing but the symmetric encryption okay what about asymmetric encryption okay if the key is different for both encryption and decryption so that is nothing but the asymmetric encryption okay what about block cipher okay like the you know we are encrypting data in block sizes okay fixed block sizes we can say then what about stream cipher okay then again it is you know encrypting data in continuous stream okay because we saw already saw this guys so that's why i'll be you know rapidly taking this thing okay then what about public uh, public key cryptography so as we know that okay it is also known as asymmetric cryptography okay uses a pair of keys like the two keys okay one is a public key for encryption and one is a private key for decryption got it then we have a private key okay so guys what about private uh, private keys it's a symmetric cryptography uses the same key for both encryption and decryption that is nothing but private key cryptography then guys what about hash functions okay so as we all know okay hash functions are used to create a fixed size output we can simply say that hash values okay these are nothing but the types of encryption which we already saw in the cryptography the basic terminologies okay then we have uh, the you know message authentication codes also known as the max okay so the max are used to verify the authenticity and the integrity of a messages okay this is nothing but the max then we have the digital signature we'll be talking about this digital signature in more details in the upcoming part of this session okay so the di digital signatures are used to validate the authenticity and the integrity of a digital document or our message 
okay that is nothing but digital signatures okay then we have the one time pad okay now what about one time pad one time pad is a form of symmetric encryption that uses a random key for each message okay so see if you're talking about the you know the mac message authentication codes so the macs are used to verify the authenticity and integrity of a message okay like we are using this mass uh, max message authentication code for use to verify our authenticity and the integrity of a message okay and uh, if we talk about the one time pad okay so the one time pad is nothing but a symmetric encryption that uses a random key for each and every message got it that is nothing but one time pad okay it will be using a random password for each and every message okay see guys stream cipher is a you know continuous type of you know uh, it is a continuous type one okay like in the block cipher okay uh, will be getting you know encrypted data in you know block size okay but in stream will be getting in a continuous manner okay that is the difference between block cipher and stream cipher yeah okay now let us talk about you know another topic which is nothing but encodings okay so see in one line okay in one sentence you will understand what is encoding okay let me show you that one encodings are systems that allow computers to represent and store characters or symbols in a way that can be understood by both machines as well as humans okay that is nothing but the encoding okay got it so after this let us talk about the different types of encodings okay let us talk about the different types of encodings okay so how many different types of encodings are there guys okay see guys there are you know several types of encodings are there okay so we'll be talking about here the three okay which are the most commonly used okay one so first one is nothing but the encoding one which is nothing but the ASC double I okay so here you can see that the long form of this which is nothing but American standard code for information interchange okay let's say okay like if you search for this you will see that like uh, like there is a letter A okay and the code for that okay is 65 okay like if you're talking about the you know the this and symbol you can say that the code for this is nothing but the 38 okay so we can simply see this okay so that is nothing but you know we can okay say this one okay this thing so these are nothing but the different types of encoding and this is the first type okay with the examples okay i you know mentioned the two example over here first is the code for a later is nothing but the 65 the code for this symbol is nothing but the 3838 okay let us talk about the you know the another one okay which is nothing but this okay unicode okay this is the another type of encoding guys okay and for example okay if we're talking about this so this is going to be a japanese word or you can say that the japanese letter okay and the unicode for this is this okay u plus three zero four five like you know for symbol hud okay this is a hard symbol okay and for this okay there is a unicode which is this one okay so u plus two seven six four 
understood guys like for each and everything like letters as well as symbols okay there is a you know code yeah so this is for the code u uni unicode okay this is for the unicode okay so that is why you will see that okay the u plus one uh, you know number okay like this okay so this is because of u unicode yeah okay so now what about the another one which is nothing but the utf8 okay what about utf8 okay which is nothing but unicode transformation format 8 bit okay like for example this is a greek letter okay like in mathematics it is also called as omega okay this symbol this is nothing but the omega in set theory this is the uh, this is the you know uh, the symbol refers to the universal set okay in mathematics set theory okay and uh, you know the utf8 code for this or encoding for this is nothing but this one okay this thing got it okay now here you can see that the chinese character or chinese letter okay in the second example and you will see that the you know utf8 code for this chinese letter okay so for each and every letter as well as for each and every word okay or even sentence okay you can create the encoding okay so understood guys like in simple words okay in simple words see like you know encoding okay is nothing but a you know just the you know representation of a anything like a character or symbol okay in terms of any you know any word or you can say that the any you know uh, combination of your letters words numbers like that okay okay so you as well as the machine can understand this thing okay machine can understand this thing okay like for a okay for a there is a 65 code okay for this symbol there is a you know 38 code okay for this heart symbol there is a you know u plus 2764 is this okay so we can say that you know Encodings are an essential aspect of computing that allow for the representation and the storage of characters and symbol in a way that can be understood by both humans and machine. Okay. Okay. So if we, you know, if we uh, put this, you know, heart symbol okay into the system so system is not able to understand this thing okay not able to understand this symbol okay so for system it needs some code so see if you are creating any file let's say text file or a excel file word file okay and you are saying that you know open a word file to your system okay so for like how you can say this to your computer how you can say this to your laptop okay so like there is a okay you know gui is there okay graphic user interface is there so from this you can able to communicate with your system okay if few people are using you know linux okay so those who have the you know commands for this okay if you are uh, you know using if you are you know uh, working with python you are working with any programming language java c c++ so for that you will have some code okay so behind the scene okay if you are you know typing something you are, if you are opening some file so which means that you are you know uh, you know 
saying something to computer like i want this okay so in background okay there is a you know uh, like infinite zero and one are there numbers so laptop can understand this okay so like that okay so encoding is nothing but okay it will be you know understand by the you know machines as well as the humans okay we'll be talking about the you know the applications of encoding okay in the upcoming part of this session okay so you will understand in a better way okay so let us go ahead okay and talk about the digital signature okay okay so if you're talking about the digital signature so we can simply say that it is a mathematical technique to use to verify the authenticity and the integrity of digital messages or documents okay that is nothing but the digital signature okay so basically the you know digital signature involves a you know uh, using a digital key which is unique to signer to the signer and can only be accessed by the signer only okay so to generate a unique code that is added to the message or document this code called the digital signature okay called the digital signature serves as a you know that that digital signature serves as a proof that the message or document has not been altered or tempered with since it was signed and that the signer is the person they claim to be okay so the digital signature assurances you know refer to the various guarantees provided by the digital signature technology such as you know confidentiality integrity authenticity and non repudiation you know so confidentiality ensures that only the intended recipient can read the message or document integrity ensures that the message or document has not been altered or tempered with authenticity you know you know now authenticity ensures that the signer is who they claim to be okay and non repudiation ensures that the signer cannot deny having signed the message or document okay so what are the different applications of digital signature okay so if we talking about the first one which is nothing but like in email in e-commerce transaction okay this is nothing but the you know application one of the application okay so see digital signatures can be used to ensure the ensure the security and authenticity of online transactions such as purchases made on e-commerce websites okay so e-commerce transactions okay uses you know digital signature what about other email authentication email authentication so here also digital signature can be used to authenticate emails and ensure that they have not been tampered with okay so this is another example okay you can see that the you know then legal documents okay then legal documents okay like a digital signatures can be used to sign legal documents such as contracts agreements to ensure their authenticity and integrity okay then we have the software updates okay so here digital signatures can be used to verify the authenticity and the integrity of software updates ensuring that they have not been tampered with or infected with malware okay and we also have a government documents like aadhar our pan card okay and any other government document 
okay so here also digital signatures can be used by governments to sign and authenticate important documents such as passports your licenses your certificates like this you know? okay so see let me give you one example or one real life incident okay to you know to show you your know, why digital signature is important okay like like one of the you know uh, the security company uh, the name was of that company uh, is i guess komodo okay you can search about it okay komodo okay like in 2011 uh, okay uh, like komodo was hacked okay and the attackers were able to steal the company's digital certificates okay and you know attackers were able to steal the company's digital certificates okay which are used to verify the authenticity of websites that company's website and software okay with these certificates the attackers could impersonate legitimate websites and software allowing them to carry out phishing attacks and distribute malware okay however the use of you know digital signatures could have prevented by this attack okay so digital signatures would have ensured that the stolen certificates could not be used to sign fake websites or any softwares okay as the signatures would not match those of the legitimate certificates this incident underscores that critical role of the digital signatures plays in ensuring the security and authenticity of digital communications and our transactions okay so that's why you know a digital signature is very much important okay uh, like one of the you know recent example about uh, why it is important why digital signature is important like in you know 2020 when the solar winds okay solar winds is it's a you know software supply chain okay was hacked okay and the attackers were able to compromise solar wind software update process allowing them to distribute a malicious update to the company's customers and the update contained a backdoor that allowed the attackers to gain access to the networks of solar winds customers okay so including numerous us government agencies and businesses the use of digital signatures could have prevented this attack by ensuring the authenticity and integrity of the software updates okay so the digital signature you know would have allowed the customers to verify that the updates they received were indeed signed by solar winds and had not been tampered with by any attackers this incident underscores the importance of using digital signatures to protect against supply chain attackers and to ensure the security of software updates okay so you know these are the you know uh, two examples okay to show you why digital signature is so much important okay why digital signature is so much important okay so let us talk about digital certificate okay so guys what about digital certificate okay so let us go ahead and understand what is you know digital certificate okay so here you see okay a digital certificate is an electronic document used to verify the identity of a person any organization or a website as well okay it contains information about the identity of the certificate holder such as their name their uh, you know organization name public key and the digital signature of the certificate issuers okay so the digital signatures or uh, sorry digital certificates are important okay because they provide a secure way to establish trust 
in online transactions okay they help to ensure that the information transmitted over the internet is secure and that the person or organization you are communicating with is who they say they are okay so they are commonly used in you know uh, online banking in e-commerce and you know other secure online transactions okay digital certificates use a public key cryptography to encrypt and decrypt data when you visit a website that uses a digital certificate okay your browser checks to see if the certificate is valid and has been issued by a trusted authority if the certificate is valid okay your browser will establish a secure connection with the website and encrypt any data that is transmitted between your computer and that particular website okay like overall we can say that certain, uh, digital certificate plays an important role in ensuring the security and authenticity of online transactions and communications okay so guys let us talk about the use cases of digital certificate okay so first use case of digital certificate is nothing but secure websites okay to secure website like uh, like when you access a secure website using the https protocol your browser verifies the digital certificate of the website to ensure that you are communicating with genuine website and not a imposter okay like another use case of digital certificate is email encryption okay like here also digital certificates are used to encrypt and sign email messages ensuring that only the intended recipient can read the messages and verifying the identity of the sender okay like another example it is nothing but code signing okay like a digital certificates are here also used to sign software code to ensure that it has not been tampered with and that it is for, from a trusted source okay then here if we're talking about vpn authentication so here you know virtual part uh, you know vpn authentication which is nothing but a, you know virtual private networks okay so also known as vpn we can say uh, we'll use vpn what instead of virtual private network okay so vpns use a digital certificates to authenticate you know users and ensure that only authorized users can access the network then we have the document signing okay like uh, like many times okay uh, like in the hiring process too okay we are signing the documents electronically like the e-sign okay so here also digital certificates can be used to sign electronic documents okay ensuring that they have not been altered since they were signed and that the signer's identity is verified yeah so you know for that okay for some times you will need a you know uh, identity you know signer's identity okay to verify the document then we have the digital signatures okay we saw these digital signatures already we uh, you know explain this you know so no need to explain this again okay but you know a short explanation is there only one line okay like uh, here okay digital signature you know are used to create digital you know uh, you know this digital certificates are used to create a digital signatures okay which are used to verify the authenticity and integrity of electronic documents okay now in mobile devices okay these mobile devices uh, also used to secure you know uh, sorry uh, these digital certificates are you know used to secure mobile devices too okay such as smartphones and tablets 
okay they are used to encrypt data and authenticate users and protect against malware and other security threats okay then uh, you know iot devi devices as well internet of things okay these digital certificates are used to secure internet of things devices as well such as smart home appliances you know and industrial sensors as well uh, and they help to ensure that these devices can communicate securely with other devices and systems okay then in online payments as well okay you know digital uh, certificates are used to secure online payments okay such as credit card transactions okay they help to ensure that the you know payment information is encrypted okay throughout the payment uh, you know payment transaction and that the recipient is a trusted merchant okay and in the electronic health records as well you know digital signature uh, certificates are used to you know secure these electronic health records as well ensuring that patient data is protected and only accessed by authorized healthcare providers okay so these are nothing but the you know few use cases of digital signatures okay see uh, uh, as i mentioned this equifax uh, you know company name in the uh, in the past session as well you know the equifax data breach okay like in 2017 okay this uh, data breach was happened okay like uh, you know uh, it's a very uh, you know largest credit card reporting agencies in the us which is uh, the name of this company is nothing but the equifax okay and uh, this equifax suffered a data breach that exposed the personal information of over you know 147 million people okay and the breach occurred because equifax failed to install a digital certificate on a critical server okay just because of equifax fail to install a digital certificate on a critical server okay which is okay which left it vulnerable okay vulnerable to exploitation by hackers okay so definitely a hacker uh, found that yes there is a vulnerability so they exploited it okay and there is a data breach happened in 2017 okay and around 147 million people's data was breached okay so that is a you know that is just because you know just uh, you know failing in you know uh, installing a digital certificate on a you know one of the server okay so that's the you know uh, how important a digital certificate is okay so if you're talking about any other example so we can say that you know uh, in 2011 okay like a digi noter okay so a digi noter okay again the you can you can search for this attack okay uh, the company this is nothing but a, you know a dutch certificate authority okay suffered a secure uh, you know security breach that allowed hackers to issue fraudulent digital certificates for a number of high profile websites including google skype and yahoo okay and the incident led to you know widespread mistrust of digital certificates and highlighted the importance of maintaining the security of you know certificate authorities you know uh, if you talk about you know another example okay so like uh, the wanna cry okay the wanna cry ransomware attack okay that will happen in 2017 okay so this wanna cry ran ransomware attack affected over around you know 200000 computers in 150 countries okay causing widespread distribution or disruption to businesses and government organization and the attack exploited a vulnerability in microsoft's service okay which had been patched months earlier okay 
the attack could have been prevented if organizations had properly installed the security update which included a digital certificate okay so that is about you know that is about a a you know digital certificates overall ex uh, explanation uh, their use cases real life examples okay okay so let's move forward uh, with the public key infrastructure okay okay so let me quickly go through it okay so you will understand okay so it is a you know it is a framework okay pki is a framework that allows for secure communication over an unsecure network okay such as internet okay because uh, you know like each and every day a lot of frauds are happening on internet okay and with the help of you know pki infrastructure okay you will be able to securely communicate okay on the internet okay because as we know internet uh, is not that much secure so we can simply say that it's unsecure network okay so it involves the use of public and private key pairs to encrypt and decrypt data ensuring that only authorized parties can access it okay so you know pki you know involves a number of different components including a certification authority ca okay registration authority certificate re, uh, you know revocation list crl and various software applications and protocols okay so overall pki is a critical technology for ensuring the security and privacy of online communications and transactions it is used a wide range of applications including secure email our e-commerce as well as online banking as okay so what are the use cases of pki okay like as discussed okay secure email in many cases okay secure emails in okay so here also pki is used to ensure and sign email messages ensuring that they cannot be intercepted or altered in transit okay likewise we have the you know e-commerce we all know that in on the online to secure online transactions okay by you know encrypting data okay we'll be using uh, pki then in online banking again the you know to you know authenticate users okay and encrypt your their data that's why we are using you know pki over here as well in online banking then vpn as well okay to you know to secure virtual private networks okay ensuring that only authorized users can access the network okay then we have the digital signatures that we saw okay so here also okay uh, pki is used to create and verify digital signatures okay which are used to authenticate an identity of the signer and ensure that a document has not been tampered with okay and then we have the secure remote access here also pki is used to secure remote access to corporate networks ensuring that only authorized users can access sensitive data okay so these are the few use cases of pki okay if you wanted to explore more so you can uh, you know search about it use cases of pki you will get a lot of use cases about pki okay so okay let us talk about uh, you know working of pki how does pki works okay so first one is nothing but the key pair generation okay like uh, we are starting with the key pair generation okay the you know because the user generates a you know pair of keys consist consisting of a public and a private key okay and as we know that public key is a you know publicly available and private key is uh, kept secret then we have certificate insurance okay the user's public key is included in a digital certificate which also includes information about the user's identity and the certificate is issued by a uh, you know trusted third party called a certification authority also called a ca okay then we have the certificate distribution 
okay so here the user's digital certificate is distributed to others who need to communicate securely with the users okay then we have the encryption okay so when someone wants to send a message to the user the encrypt message okay encrypt the message using the user's public key okay then we have the decryption okay so here the users receive a you know encrypted message and did you know decrypt it using their private key which only the you know possesses okay and lastly we have the you know digital signature okay so the user can also digitally sign a message using their private key which provides a way to verify that the message has not been tampered with and that the sender is uh, who they claim to be okay so overall we can say that pki provides a secure way for users to communicate and protect their data using encryption and digital signatures while also enabling others to verify their identity through the use of digital certificates issued by the trusted th you know third parties okay like a certificate authorities okay so that is about working of pki okay and what are the different uh, you know let us talk about you know the certificate authorities okay so a certificate authority also known as ca is an organization or entity that issues digital certificates to verify the identity of individuals organizations or devices okay so here the certificate authorities plays a critical role in establishing trust and security in online transactions by providing a trusted third party service for verifying the authenticity of digital certificates okay so you know when a ca means a certification uh, certification authority issues a digital certificate it uses a digital signature to certify the authenticity of the certificate okay and this digital signature is created using the ca's private key okay which is securely stored and only used for signing certificates okay the ca's public key is widely distributed and used to verify the digital signature on the certificates so simply overall we can say that ca's plays a critical role in establishing a trust and securely in uh, you know security in online transactions by providing a trusted third party service for verifying the authenticity of digital certificates then guys lastly let us talk about uh, you know what are the different certificate types are there okay and then okay we'll talk about you know uh, the certificate chaining okay so please wait for 2 3 minutes more okay to understand the you know more about the certificate chaining as well okay so first one is nothing but a domain validated certificate okay uh, we can simply say that you know these are the different types okay like a organization validated certificate okay so a domain validated certificate is the simplest type of the certificate and it is typically used to verify the you know identity of a website we can simply say okay and a organization validated certificate provides a higher level of validation than a you know domain validated certificate okay to obtain organization validated certificate okay the ca verifies that the applicants is a legitimate organization and they uh, and that they own the domain for which the certificate is being issued okay then we have the third one extended validation certificate okay so here the, this is the highest level of validation and security okay to obtain this certificate okay ca conducts a okay rigorous uh, you know verification process that includes verifying the legal and physical existence of the organization and confirming that the applicant has the right to obtain the certificate okay then we have the you know code signing certificate okay 
okay it is used to sign software code okay and ensure that it has not been tampered with okay since it was signed okay uh, basically this prevent malware and other security threats okay then we have the email signing certificate okay so here you can see that okay here to sign email okay then we have the client authentication okay to you know to authenticate the client okay for we are using this client authentication certificate okay and finally okay uh, let us talk about uh, you know the client certificate okay uh, you know the certificate chaining okay so this is also known as you know the chain of trust okay it is a process used to establish trust in a digital certificates okay and what are the different steps okay in certificate chaining so first one is nothing but a you know a user attempts to connect to a website or servers that has a digital certificate okay then second one is nothing but you know users browser checks if it recognizes the ca issued the certificate okay then we have to you know if the you know the browser downloads any necessary and intermediate certificates okay and users them to verify the authenticity of the certificate chain until it reaches a trusted root certificate okay then in the fourth step the if the browser successfully establishes a chain of trust it verifies the digital certificate is valid okay and lastly if it is you know if the you know if the browser is able unable to establish a chain of trust it will simply dis, uh, display an error message okay so you know that's about a you know uh, all about a certificate chaining guys